Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the fourth Optimizing Dancers Potential webinar series organized by the Dance Science team from the School of Dance. I'm Heidi Yu, Dance Science Lecturer, and I'll be facilitating the webinar tonight. It is our pleasure to have two guest speakers with us tonight, Dr. Jojo Lai and Dr. Samuel Ling. But before we Hi. start, hello, I would like to tell you a bit more about them. Jojo currently works in the Hospital Authority and serves as an executive committee member of Hong Kong Association of Dance Medicine and Science. She has also received dance training locally and in the US. And it is wonderful to know that she wishes to continue her medical training in orthopedics with a growing interest in dance medicine as her area of research. And Samuel is clinical assistant professor of orthopedics and traumatology at the Hong Kong, uh, at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. He's also honorary associate consultant and head of foot and ankle team in the Prince of Wales Hospital. Now, I'm going to invite Jojo to, sir, to share her research that she conducted on APA students, looking at foot and ankle injuries among dancers and different dance styles. We welcome the audience to type any questions or comments that you have have in the chat box and there will be a Q&A session after and if it is more convenient for you to type in Chinese you might do so as well. Over to you Jojo. Thank you very much Heidi. So let me share my screen right now. So can everybody see my screen? All right. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jojo Lai, and it's a great pleasure to meet everyone here. And um, thank you very much, Heidi, for introducing us. And uh, just apart from uh, being an orthopedic resident in Prince of Wales Hospital this coming July, um, I'm also a dancer on the side. So this explains why um, I'm interested in dance medicine. And also, that's why I'm here today. And uh, Today's webinar will be very casual, so please feel free to let us know if you have any questions or uh, if you want us to repeat anything in Chinese. And uh, before I start, I would really want to take this opportunity to thank Heidi, um, Anna, Brenton, everybody in Hong Kong APA uh, for inviting us uh, to this webinar series, because now that COVID is still everywhere in Hong Kong and worldwide, I think uh, having all these uh, webinars, it will be very good for everybody uh, uh, in the dance community to get together uh, so we could still uh, know uh, what's going on uh, happening and what's happening around us. So uh, for today, uh, we're going first to talk about what is uh, dance uh, medicine actually. The second part will be uh, foot and ankle injuries in ballet, contemporary, and Chinese dancers. And after that, we'll have Dr. Ling also to introduce us a uh, Hong Kong uh, COHK Dance Medicine Injury Research Clinic. So for the first part, what is dance medicine actually? So uh, some of you might already know, but um, dance medicine is a growing field under sports medicine, which specializes in promoting the overall health and well-being of dancers. So it involves multidisciplinary collaborations among dance scientists, sports medicine specialists, orthopedic surgeons, physiotherapists, sports psychologists, and dietitians, etc. And why are we actually focusing on dancers? Like athletes, uh, dancers also have a lot of risk factors for injuries, including training since young age, overuse, uh, hypermobility, high physical demands, footwear, etc. And these injuries can get quite severe and can also deter dancers from choosing dance as a career or it can be potentially career ending. So as you can see in the literature um, for this research, um, they're seeing they're looking at full time pre professional dancers, like all of you dancers in, in APA, and they have found out that so almost everybody has actually an injury for dance. And there is a whooping 86% of the dancers noted that um, they have one or more injuries. So if you are one of uh, one of them or you are joining us in this webinar tonight, um, there's a very good chance you have also injured yourself before. And uh, these injuries sometimes can linger on and can result in time loss in let's say rehearsals or performances. 
So this is actually a huge concern for us. And this is why there is dance medicine in the first place. So uh, back in 1990s, uh, International Association for Dance Medicine and Science was established uh, with the goal uh, to enhance the health, the well-being, the training and performances in dance by cultivating medical, scientific, and educational excellence. They also hold uh, annual conferences with the most recent one will be coming uh, October in Denver. As for dance medicine in Hong Kong, uh, we are still in our baby steps uh, with Hong Kong Association of Dance Medicine and Science and also CUHK recently on board to take care of local dancers uh, in Hong Kong. So in CUHK Medicine, uh, we are actually under CUHK Orthopedics Department's uh, sports medicine team led by Professor Petra Yong. And we are in close collaboration with uh, Hong Kong Association of Dance Medicine and Science. And uh, we aim to promote healthy dancing and with the saying that uh, science strengthens the arts. Uh, there are three main uh, areas of service that we want to achieve. The first one is medical care for dancers. The second of all is community education. And the third is dance related clinical research. So for the first one, uh, we have recently opened our uh, CUHK Dance Medicine Injury Research Clinic. And later on, we'll have Dr. Ling to introduce us. Um, so if any one of you have any injuries that you might want to come and have us take a look, uh, please stay tuned. And uh, apart from medical care, we are also interested in uh, education for dancers. So we do regular uh, have articles on our webpage. So uh, these are usually around uh, dancers health or common uh, dance conditions. So these are all available, uh, easily re readily available online. So everybody can actually go and have a look. And the third of all is our dance related clinical research. So our most recent uh, project is actually with uh, dancers in Hong Kong APA. And we have uh, actually presented in uh, this year's annual Congress of uh, Hong Kong Orthopedic Association. We are very fortunate as well to get the best original foot and ankle paper. So we have decided that we will uh, recently uh, submit to Journal of Dance Medicine and Science. So here I would like to thank all of you dancers, staff of Hong Kong APA, uh, and also my colleagues for their incredible work. So after a very brief intro of what is dance medicine, uh, we'll move on to the second part of our webinar tonight. So um, the second part is about the foot and ankle injuries in ballet, contemporary and Chinese dancers. And this is our research project. So um, I guess some of you may wonder, among all the uh, body parts, why do we want to focus on foot and ankle? Um, it's actually the most commonly injured anatomical region in dancers. And um, other than foot and ankle, the other top three uh, of uh, injured body parts in dancers include the knees and also the back for uh, reference. So there are many examples of a foot and ankle condition in dancers with chronic ones usually more uh, common than acute ones. For chronic ones, uh, common conditions include uh, flexor, hollicis longus, and posterior tibialis tendonitis. This sounds very, very complicated, but uh, don't worry. This is uh, just essentially means that, so if you can see um, the picture here, and you can actually see my cursor, um, this means that the tendon uh, behind the inside of your ankle bone, this is when they get inflamed and starts to hurt. So this is when, especially when we go on a lot of releves or we point our toes a lot. And the second of all is ankle impingement syndrome. This is when uh, our ankles hurt either in front, like right here, or we call anterior side or posterior side when it hurts at the back. For anterior side, this is normally when we do a lot of ground plie. So when we call a ground plie, there is a lot of dorsi ankle flexion. So this is when we do a releve and we do ground plie, there's uh, the dorsi flexion of the ankle. So ankle impingement syndrome normally is uh, brought by some bony or soft tissue abnormalities. 
The third will be metatarsal stress fracture. So as you can see in the x-ray here, this shows a partial x-ray of the foot. And as you can see here, there is actually a crack uh, over the metatarsal, which is one of the uh, bones uh, in our feet. So this is when we have a lot of rehearsal when we do not have enough rest. Um, the prolonged stress in long term will weaken the bone and causes the crack and the fracture. And when we talk about acute uh, common foot and ankle conditions, it's almost always it's an ankle sprain or what we call out high in Chinese. So back to our study, um, we are very fortunate to work with all of you guys uh, in Hong Kong APA, and we want to compare uh, different dance genres, including um, ballet, Chinese, and contemporary. These are the three major streams that you guys are studying. So there are a lot of uh, examples of genre specific movements with wrist and foot, uh, wrist of foot and ankle injury. So uh, here are some of the examples. So this is back in contemporary. This is what we call a toe rise. And this is also uh, in contemporary. Um, the English term for this one is called a knee drop jump. So even though it's called a knee drop jump, uh, it's actually we're landing on our foot arch. This is back to Chinese. Uh, this is what we call Ding Bo Fan Sun. Again, you can see a lot of twisting motion in the ankle region. In ballet, this is what we call a tour chasse. And this is uh, when there is a lot of um, torsional forces when we land on, uh, on our ankle. This is back in Chinese. This is called Cheng Lao Yu. As you can see here, um, there is a lot of control over the ankle region. And uh, we actually have to use a lot of our uh, ankle intrinsic muscles. So they have to be very strong in order to maintain this position. And lastly, this is back in contemporary. I don't think we have a formal uh, term for this, but uh, essentially it's called the spiral landing. Again, it's uh, using the foot and ankle region a lot. So having said that, like different dance genres use the foot and ankle uh, differently. But at the same time, there's uh, still limited evidence in uh, the literature saying uh, whether or not uh, the pattern of foot and ankle injury across different dance genres is different. So um, our hypothesis, with this in mind, our hypothesis in our study is that the pattern of foot and ankle injury will differ across different dance genres. And uh, our objectives of our study include to compare the foot and ankle injury epidemiology across the three dance genres, and also to explore the most injured uh, anatomical subregion of the foot and ankle in each dance genres. So we have recruited uh, 61 eligible Hong Kong APA dance students from year two and above. It's because we uh, collected the data in 2018 and 19. So uh, for dance students who are year one uh, during last year, they have yet to join APA for th their formal dance training. And this is our eligibility criteria. So we have uh, included everybody who is 18 years old or over, all races, both genders, uh, current APA dance students, and whether they have dance-related uh, foot and ankle pain. But we have excluded anyone that has pain with onset prior to dance history, whether they have a uh, foot and ankle injury outside of dance. With, um, we have excluded non-APA dance students and those who are under 18 years old. This is just for um, easier obtaining of our consent. And consent was obtained uh, prior to the start of study upon approval of the research ethics committee at CUHK. So there are a couple of definitions in our research. Uh, the first one is recordable injury. This is defined as anatomical tissue level impairment, which for example, can present as as pain that occurred uh, as a result of participation in dance class, rehearsals or performances, and resulted in suboptimal participation, either defined by a medical practitioner or through self-report. And dance exposure. Dance exposure, uh, one dance exposure means that it is one hour of participation in class, rehearsal or performances in which the dancer is exposed to the possibility of a dance injury. And incidence rate. This is the number of injuries divided by total of dance exposure in one academic year. So this is expressed in the number of injuries over 1000 dance exposures. 
So we have collected our data using Quatrix, uh, which is an online questionnaire. And we have also prepared some of the illustration uh, for dancers to look at. So um, this defines our, this is, let's say this is the forefoot. This is the midfoot in yellow. This is hind foot ankle in pink. And this is the Achilles region in blue. We are also interested to know the dancer's uh, demographics, the spe uh, specifics of foot and ankle pain, which uh, we'll talk over uh, in a minute, and a more objective foot and ankle outcome score. So for specifics of foot and ankle pain, we are interested to know the level of pains at different regions of the foot and ankle, how long has the pain been, whether this is a recurring pain, whether they have sought it for any treatment, whether they remember if there is a significant event or injury that led to this foot and ankle pain, and lastly, how has the pain affected them. So these are our results. So it's actually quite uh, interesting to find that there is actually 96% of the dancers have an overall foot and ankle injury uh, since the dance of the career. For prevalence and incidence, for prevalence, uh, ballet has the highest prevalence versus contemporary has the highest incidence. So for some of us that may not know what's the definition of prevalence and incidence uh, are. So for prevalence, we're essentially looking at existing uh, injuries that happens in one population at a given time versus an incidence, which is different. We're essentially looking at new injuries uh, in the same population group uh, at, let's say, uh, in 2018 and 19. So if we look further, um, there is a general trend that um, the higher year the students are, there is a higher incidence uh, of the foot and ankle injury, as you can see in the graph here. Also, uh, for the prevalence of foot and ankle pain by anatomical subregions, so uh, for the forefoot, midfoot, hindfoot, and ankle, and also the Achilles, for forefoot is actually quite prevalent um, across the three dance genres, but there is actually no uh, statistical uh, significance for that. Otherwise, um, the hindfoot and ankle seems to be the most problematic for all three dance genres. We have also done more statistical analysis by doing the odds ratio of foot and ankle injury in each dance genres. So again, uh, for some of us that may not know what is odds ratio or what we call an OR, this means that um, it's defined by the likelihood of one group, a target group, to develop a condition when compared to the non-target group. So for example, in ballet for Achilles, ballet dancers, if they have an OR of six, that means that ballet dancers, when compared to non-ballet dancers, they are six times as likely to develop an Achilles injury. Similarly, uh, for Chinese dance, um, for Chinese dancers, they have almost a three times as likely uh, hood to have a midfoot injury. And lastly, for contemporary, similarly, they are um, 1.5 times as likely to develop a hind foot and ankle injury. As for the most common mechanism of injury, the most common one is still ankle sprain, which is very compatible with all the literature search. And uh, other, uh, other than ankle sprains, landing from jumps and also forced turnout are also common mechanisms of injuries of the foot and ankle as well. We have also looked at the effects of foot and ankle injury in dancers. So most of them actually resulted in partial absence or full but suboptimal uh, performances. And as for treatment, um, this is actually the most interesting finding that we have seen in our research. So uh, we have found out that almost half of uh, the dancers will actually go for chiropractor or traditional Chinese medicine as their first line of treatment. There is only one third of them will actually go for formal medical uh, consultation. So this illustrates the potential that uh, we can develop more orthopedic intervention uh, for these dancers which uh, we have, that's why we have started our uh, CUHK dance clinic actually. So for the discussion, um, we have concluded that uh, the pattern of foot and ankle injury uh, differed across different dance genres. So to answer our research question, no, they are not the same uh, for different uh, dance genres. 
And as for um, the other findings, we have also found some research to support um, our research findings. For ballet, it stated that classical ballet dancers performing on point, demi point or plie, exerts forces that, although normal in magnitude, are increased in frequency. So uh, this would overuse our Achilles tendon. And as you can see from the picture here, uh, where at the level that we uh, tie our uh, point shoes ribbon, it has shown that there is reduced blood supply. So this is also prone uh, to impingement or attritional injuries. As for contemporary, there is a higher involvement of weight bearing on footage or uh, in extreme ankle plantar flexion. And this is associated with uh, posterior ankle impingement syndrome, as we have uh, said before. And for Chinese dance, um, there is a higher involvement of gymnastics and acrobatics. And uh, from the research uh, from the literature, landing from unsteady bases, such as landing from partners or props, is associated with midfoot injuries. However, um, in the literature, there is still very limited uh, research uh, in contemporary and Chinese dance. So we are actually very looking forward to any updates uh, in the future. Um, there are some limitations of our study. Uh, first of all, our study has a relatively small population size and consisted of local data from pre professional dancers only. So this may not truly reflect the general dance population in Hong Kong. And our um, research is also based on self-reported injuries. So documentation by healthcare professional is not a requisite. This is because um, there are more recent uh, systematic reviews saying that by only including those with formal documentation, we are at a risk of underreporting. And from what we know, um, dancers are very notoriously known for not seeking medical advice. We know that um, we want to try our best and uh, we'll sometimes we'll even like suck up any pain knowing that if there is no pain, there's no gain. And especially when we are in rehearsal. So we want to give our 100% and knowing that we, if we don't give our 100%, there's always a chance that um, our spots, let's say in the choreography would get taken at any time. So with that said, um, so there are more uh, systematic reviews suggesting that perhaps if we, also include those with self-reported injuries. Being more inclusive will be better for uh, all these injury epidemiological studies. So uh, overall, as our next step, uh, we plan to do some prospective study with follow-up uh, for and pain with uh, Hong Kong APA dance students. And we would like to explore uh, genre-specific uh, focused uh, foot and ankle strengthening protocol and prepare uh, compare pre and post training results for uh, injury prevention. So ultimately we would like to uh, minimize the foot and ankle injury in dancers. So this is pretty much uh, all we have found in our research. And I hope you also enjoy our uh, research study. And so um, after the first part, we have uh, introduced what is dance medicine, the second part of our foot and ankle injury in ballet contemporary and Chinese dancers. Um, third, uh, we'll like to uh, invite Dr. Ling uh, to help us invite uh, CUHK and introduce CUHK Dance Medicine uh, Injury Research Clinic. So. Thank you, Dr. Ling. Sorry, so uh, before we proceed, um, are there any questions regarding your study or anything that the um, participants would want to know more about? Yes, no, maybe. Okay, so um, if not, then what we're getting, um, I just wanted to sort of um, promote to you what, what we have. So I think um, dance medicine is a very, very um, fresh or young thing. It's still under development. Um, we're super happy that we have your dean. So um, uh, Ms. Anna Chan is um, super helpful and, and very supportive of the thing. So I think now we have her on board. Um, definitely uh, we can do a lot more than what we've done um, in the past two years. Of course, a lot of um, our plans were um, sort of stopped by COVID and everything. Um, regarding the dance clinic, so I just wanna talk about it. It's, it's actually something that's free, okay? Um, but we're borrowing, um, well, we're renting the, the so-called place from the um, hospital authority, 
Okay, so you do have to pay um, a, a so-called registration fee just to the hospital authority, but um, every, everything there, so the, the doctors, which is basically myself, and um, maybe some other uh, medical professionals there, um, they're just there for, on a so-called voluntary basis. Now we're, we're doing it as a research clinic, we're packaging it uh, uh, that way. Um, um, but to be honest, there isn't ongoing research at <laughs> present. Um, and it's more of a service thing so far. So uh, all you need to do is you just have to log in to our website, which is um, cohkdancemedicine.com. And then you, you get to the link, uh, you just have to register and one of our staff will help um, sort it out. Um, uh, as we said before, uh, with um, Heidi and Brenton and, and Jake, and obviously um, with your dean, um, uh, we're hoping that uh, we can do a little bit more for um, the, uh, uh, be it the APA students and also um, the dance community at large. Okay, so this is not something that's uh, exclusive to, to um, just APA students or even professional dancers and all that. So if someone is a dancer and they had a dance related injury, um, they are welcome to come to this clinic. Um, and then we'll help triage and maybe refer you for um, the uh, subsequent management. So uh, I think that's about it. I saw um, some, I think Rex in the, uh, in the chat, he was talking about, you know, having a yes. meniscal surgery. Uh, I think our audience might not be able to see the questions from one another. Oh, okay, so, so Rex, uh, just allow me to uh, read out the questions and see uh, if uh, either Jojo or Samuel you would like to answer. So the okay. question is in Chinese uh, from Rex Jern. Um, he, he's, uh, ask, he's asking maybe there will be future opportunity to um, research on his knee. So, he said he had a left leg and 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 he had yeah, so um, we're, we're keen on that. What we're doing right now um, from the COHK side, um, basically we do have a um, ankle instability, um, uh, uh, um, a ankle instability study planned um, and that's for Chinese dancers. Okay, and that's what we're doing so far. Um, we don't have much else yet. So, you know, if, um, for example, if Heidi has a good research um, um, topic and you want us to, you know, collaborate and help with, we're um, definitely very happy to do that. Thank you. And I think from Anna, from our Dean Anna Chen, I think it's very similar to the question that I wanted to ask uh, Jojo. So, but thank you, Jojo. That was very um, wonderful insights from your research. And we know a lot more um, about ourselves, about APA students. So, is there any recommendations or tips that you can um, give us and our students for uh, injury prevention of the foot and ankle or just simply keeping it healthy for different genres? So now that we have discovered the injury pattern, we would like to know. So <laughs> Right. Uh, thank you very much for the question, especially thank you, Anna. And so I would say for uh, ankle injury prevention, um, the muscles is key. So um, if we have a strong uh, ankle, then it will be less likely for us to have instability, which a lot of dancers have actually. And uh, let's say if we actually put some time, let's say during our warm up time, to strengthen really, um, to focus on our ankles, do a lot of like releves, do a lot of plies, make sure we actually remember our intrinsic muscles of the ankle. So a lot of times we do a lot of stretching, a lot of warm ups. Um, we don't focus a lot in like very small uh, muscles, especially the foot. This is very important actually. So if we have strong intrinsic muscles, let's say if we do have certain movements, let's say if we land uh, kind of in an awkward position, if we have strong interesting muscles as well as strong proprioception, 
proprioception means that um, where you feel your body and like in the sense of uh, your surroundings. So let's say intrinsics and also proprioception. If we can work on that um, daily and frequently and regularly, uh, these two will help us to prevent um, ankle sprains or like ankle injuries to keep our um, ankles healthy. Yeah, so so uh, that brings us to another point. I um, actually left this out. So we are actually planning to do some sort of injury um, prevention program. So if you know Heidi comes along and pushes you guys or uh, promotes it to you guys, it would be great if you can join in. So um, uh, for uh, different sports now, um, we I know some dancers don't like us um, sort of talking or comparing dance with sports, but dance um, is, uh, although there's a lot of um, um, aesthetic and, and the artistic side of it, but um, there's also the very athletic side of dance and uh, the very um, you know, physically demanding side. And that um, is very similar to our athletes. And what we see now is that, um, um, especially with so-called sport-related um, injury prevention um, programs, um, well, it does um, decrease uh, injury risks. So that's what we're trying to work out something for dancers. So in the future, if we ask you to participate with it, you know, we hope you will. It's probably going to be something that would take up maybe uh, 20 to 30 minutes um, of your time, maybe twice a week, something like that. So um, uh, stay tuned and we hope we can do that for you. Thank you. Thank you, um, Dr. Lei. You just promoted our future intervention conditioning injury prevention program. So yes, uh, we're currently starting to plan. And hopefully, um, I think the injury prevention program we're going to run is not just looking at foot and ankle injury. It will be more um, overall uh, prehab program. So um, we'll look forward to that. Now, the Questions are coming, so let's see the next one. So from Serena, mm, she said she knows that figure skaters haven't been mentioned here in this webinar, but is it in any way that their foot injuries might be similar to dancers? If, yeah, if Jojo or Samuel would like it. Yes, I can I'll, answer that. To be honest, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm, I'm assuming that the impact would be different. Okay, so the twisting injuries would be pretty similar, but the, um, the um, uh, contusions or the impactful um, type of injuries might, might be different. Um, Jojo, do we have any data on that? Um, I don't have it on hand, but uh, from what I've done uh, in the uh, in the literature search, I would say a lot of the um, dance injury and uh, figure skaters injury mechanisms are very similar as you said, but in terms of, because there are a lot of uh, involves a lot of um, twisting and turning, especially landing from air, landing from uh, part and stuff like that. So uh, I've seen um, the numbers of injuries are being more than actually dancers. And I guess that makes sense as well. But um, if you were asking um, what essentially is different between um, the uh, dancers versus the uh, figure skaters in terms of in injury and epidemiology, then I don't have the answers for that. I'm a friend. So point she is also just a skate as well. Um, that's another research for, <laughs> for our doctors to <laughs> conduct maybe. And uh, Miss Irene asked, how do you classify injury if there's no pain, if it's just weak and can't, cannot do certain exercise? Would you define it as an injury? For example, it's just a simple rise onto um, uh, your mental tussle, like half demi point. Yes, of course. Uh, I think um, anything that uh, affects your function, um, you know, it's sort of worth treating. Now, um, for the definition, uh, of course, Jojo uh, um, was talking about it a little bit, and that I think is more from the academic side. So we do have to try to split things into relatively minor injuries and which ones are more um, um, severe. And that's just, just for um, academic purposes, I guess. But from, um, I think for each dancer um, themselves, you know, if that thing, is bothering you, if that pain is bothering you or that instability is, uh, is bothering you, 
then that is something that needs to be looked at and uh, we try to help with that. Um, again, you know, drawing from our experience with um, athletes, um, a lot of our, um, for example, I, I'm a foot and ankle specialist. I see a lot of ankle sprains. Um, sometimes a lot of these patients, they, they have absolutely no problem with their um, activities of daily living. You know, it's just when they go on into the competition and they tell, tell us, you know, hey, darling, there is, you know, there's this go-to move that I, I do and it, it helps me score, but I can't do it anymore. I'm just not, I'm just not, um, I'm confident in performing that, you know, my ankle or my knee sort of gives way. Um, it, it's, you know, sometimes minor things like that. And if, if these are nagging you and it's, it's affecting your performance, it's maybe if it affects your aesthetic, you know, um, within your routine or your choreography, then that's something that um, I would suggest we should look into and, and do something about. Thank you for your answer. So I think go back to Irene's question and also for our students or any dance students, dancers, probably it's easier to look at a problem when it's small than wait until um, you really define it as an injury yourself and then you go to Dr. Ling. Okay, so uh, move on to the next question from Poon Sik Fong. Say hello, thank you so much for the presentation and sharing. I'm very happy to see different dance science research is happening in Hong Kong. May I ask, do you have any suggestion to ease the overuse of Achilles? Any cool down exercise such as fascia release that you would suggest? Thank you very much. Um, this is actually quite tricky, and I think uh, it depends on the dance genres that you're actually in. So let's say for ballet, I think um, this is um, one of the findings that we uh, see in our research that uh, ballet have ballet dancers have uh, more um, likelihood to have uh, Achilles uh, injury. And I would say, I mean, for personal experience, uh, <laughs> um, I would say sometimes um, if I tie my uh, point shoes ribbon too tightly, it will really hurt. And sometimes I always do like cool down exercise. I would do massage over the um, Achilles to make sure um, I don't form like any knots um, over the Achilles. And if I do feel um, there is pain, I normally I will really take it easy just because especially when you're going on point, if you just force it, um, especially when it starts to hurt, it tends to linger on a lot if you don't take it easy. So um, this would be my, um, just from my personal experience by like doing on point and stuff like that. Um, I have yet to actually um, seek any <laughs> formal medical attention myself for <laughs> this particular um, problem. But um, sometimes I, I feel like um, doing a lot of like, self massage uh, would actually help. Yeah, so um, I think fatigue is, is a very important thing that we have to look at. Um, one thing is um, the planning of your training or your, or your practice or your rehearsals. So um, uh, you do want to um, graduate back into it. So um, uh, just like any training program, you don't want to jump straight in and then um, overdo it. So it really does need, you know, your, your body needs time to adapt. So that in terms of that, um, it really is up to, um, well, whoever's choreographing or your director and all that for, for the um, production. Um, when you do develop Achilles problems, okay, it, it becomes a problem. So um, we, I'm not too sure if you have any friends or um, um, know anyone with an Achilles tendon rupture. Now, um, there are two types of um, people who actually rupture. There are those that have a so-called um, healthy tendon, and then you have some sort of injury, and that injury, you know, energy is so severe that the healthy tendon ruptures. Now, those, you know, are probably less preventable. You, you may talk about, you know, having better floors, better um, environment, but those may not be so preventable. Um, but there are the other groups that actually has a disease, um, diseased Achilles tendon, and then they rupture um, within that. Now, this group of patients are really, really difficult to treat. And when you do have a rupture, actually when you come back, the function is gonna be quite bad, okay? So um, 
my, my advice would be, so if there is, you know, persistent pain, swelling over that region and it keeps happening, okay, um, it's always prudent to get it checked first, okay, to see, you know, if your tendon is already diseased, um, what can you do about it? Now, there's a bunch of stuff that you can do, okay, so there's a lot of physiotherapy that would help, um, and, and all the fascia release, I would put that into all the manual therapy that our physiotherapists um, can do. Um, and if that fails, then we can always step it up into more invasive stuff. So there's a lot of um, injections that we can can do um, for the Achilles in some of our elite athletes. Um, we can go for stuff like um, PRP, so uh, platelet-rich plasma, and all, all, all sorts of different weird and wonderful <laughs> injections. And even um, for some people, we can actually go for um, surgery. But I think at, um, at this juncture, what we want to say is um, don't ignore the pain, especially if it's recurrent pain at a very localized specific site, because that often means something, you know, more sinister is there. And um, yeah. All right, thank you very much for both of your answers. Now the questions really comes at the end of the webinar. We try to answer as many as we can, but we try to keep it in an hour. Um, so as Dr. Ling, you were just talking about um, if it's a more severe case that we might need to um, have surgery on the foot and ankle. Um, Henry Lam asked, dancers might be afraid of surgery as it might impact the flexibility or range of movement, uh, range of motion in a joint. Uh, what is the opinion from, um, from you? Um, this, this Henry Lamb sounds suspicious, you know, suspiciously, <laughs> you know, familiar. So maybe the video <laughs> from Disney. Um, but anyways, um, uh, sometimes, yeah, it does, especially with the, um, uh, with the rehabilitation. So I think um, um, surgery coupled with um, good rehabilitation is, is paramount. Um, we are sometimes even talking about so-called prehabilitation. So um, training before the, um, uh, the surgery, um, getting a good range of motion, getting a good um, muscular bulk. Um, we all know that um, you know, training up the muscles is, is um, very difficult. It's very easy to talk about, but it's actually extremely difficult to do. Um, um, the, we're, we're always talking about, you know, we are treating a disease, right? So um, there, it, it's not like we're doing something on a, on a dancer that's completely well, doing well without problems. You know, we're, we're doing this because the dancer has maybe instability, um, for example, um, going back to the ankle, maybe they do have some um, ankle instability and they have repeated sprains. Um, remember that, you know, uh, dancers for now might be young, okay? But uh, uh, for example, in osteoarthritis in ankle, um, we see a lot of these patients um, and they're coming in in the middle ages. So it's something like um, the 40s, um, um, early 50s, and they have a lot of ankle arthritis. And 70% of these patients um, tell us that actually, you know, this is due to um, previous ankle injuries that have been neglected. Okay, so we see too many of these. And, and when it gets to that late stage, it's very, very hard to, um, um, to treat. And the function is often a lot worse. So we do want to, you know, catch it early and, and do it early. But um, of course, uh, I do understand, you know, flexibility, sometimes even hyper flexibility, some, some dancers like it. Okay. Um, what, what I would suggest is you do. We all like it. Not, not only some dancers, we all like it. You do need the strength to back it up. So you do need the, the, the um, yes, power yes. To, to maintain some sort of stability. So you could be flexible, but also stable. And, and I think that is the um, key point. I think that's the key to uh, another question uh, Ms. Stella Lau asked. She said, um, is there any body type that is more prone to injury, uh, like hyperextended legs or bow legs or hyperextended ankle? Um, from, from my knowledge, uh, a lot of research has been done on hyperextension, extended knees and ankles, especially among dancers, and they are prone to injuries and different types of injuries. What are your point of views here? 
um, Jojo or Sammy. I would also agree, actually, especially in a lot of dancers. Um, I guess for non-dancers, uh, it's quite, uh, it's an interesting thing to note that uh, dancers look uh, look very heavily on like hyperextended knees. It looks better for some reason. Um, all of us know that. <laughs> And just for arches, so let's say for non-dancers, they may not get like, why do we love foot arches? Like we love big ones, like the bigger, the better. <laughs> but like, so yeah. So I would say um, I agree very much with uh, what Dr. Lang said, uh, what Dr. Lang said. If we have the flexibility, we always need the strength to back it up. So um, let's say for hyperextended knees, that means your knee, itself is actually quite unstable. You can, like your range of movement is more than relative to compared to other people. So using the quadriceps, which is your um, your uh, anterior side of your um, of your uh, leg, I mean your thigh um, is actually quite important. So uh, strengthening for the quadriceps uh, would help stabilize um, your knee. So uh, for that, then hopefully that would uh, prevent at least uh, knee injury. So let's say when uh, when there are a lot of uh, rotations um, around, uh, revolving around the knees, um, there are a lot of uh, injuries, let's say like ACL tears and meniscal tears, a lot of them are actually from pivoting motions of the, of the knee. So if you have strong quadriceps, that would help prevent that. So um, I think that is also for I another- I disagree a little bit. Okay, so um, I don't think that the more, you know, hyper mobile, the more flexible you are, um, it automatically assumes that um, you're gonna have more injuries. Um, sometimes it is, uh, um, from my limited knowledge of dance, so I appreciate, you know, I might not be the guy to talk about it here, but um, sometimes if you do have limited range, so, so for example, if you have limited hip range, um, you, you tend to try to compensate it with um, abnormal motion in other joints. And that actually is actually worse. Okay, so, so there's that. And um, from a, you know, evidence-based point of view, um, actually uh, the muscle symmetry or the symmetry um, itself, um, that is also a very, very important factor for um, injuries. Okay, so if you have marked asymmetry between, you know, your dominant and non-dominant leg or between your hamstrings and your quadricep muscles, things like that, those are the things that are proven to have a higher injury risk. So um, therefore, um, go train. So if Brenton tells you to do the Pilates or go run and do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I think that also answer um, part of Teresa's question. Uh, we need to kind of wrap up. So I'm going to choose one final question to answer. Um, yes, I, I think I agree with this question as well. So uh, it's from Irene Lowe. But I'm going to modify it. And <laughs> phrase it in my way. So uh, from my own experience, going to see a doctor and telling them about my injuries, like in the past, it wasn't a very uh, pleasant experience as they tend to not understand uh, what, like if your back hurts when you're back bending, then don't do back bend. That's, that's a, a typical answer that we would get. So I think uh, one, um, do you, do you, like, first of all, what got um, Sammy, what got you into dance? <laughs> like you said, you're not a dancer. So why are you interested in treating um, dancer? And also while you're treating, do you have a different perspective or a different treatment than you're treating a normal um, normal person who are not active? Sorry, I missed part of the question because of yeah, a, There are a few questions. So um, yeah, so what got you into treating dancers? Like, why are you interested in dance medicine? And also when you're treating a dancer and you're treating, treating a normal person who doesn't do much exercise, are the treatments or your perspective different? Yeah, so um, definitely um, for, for dancing, you know, um, I don't know too much about it. And I do believe that um, for a successful um, um, a clinic to treat um, dancers, we do need people who do know about it. So we are trying to learn about it. 
um, you know, hopefully, you know, in a couple of years time when um, Dr. Lai and all that become specialists, you know, she can help a lot more. Um, where uh, we, that's why we try to work with the, um, the experts. So work with Heidi, Jake, um, Brenton and all that to, um, uh, and what, what we do want to propose now, I, I don't know if we can talk about it here is I want to propose them to actually come and see the clinic together. So, and then we can get a, get a plan out because, um, um, you know, uh, just putting dancers into a whole group is already not the best thing we can do, right? So, um, you know, ballet has their type of um, um, language, um, their type of uh, uh, injury prevalence. Um, contemporary dance, um, Chinese dance, all have um, very specific things. And, um, you know, we do want to know about the different um, uh, uh, requirements for the aesthetic. I mean, these dance um, genres have been around for so long. Um, uh, you, know, you, you do need to learn about them um, to, to speak the language. And I think, um, you know, having a open, more open dialogue um, that we can actually discuss what we um, want to do, um, you know, which type of um, uh, motion um, uh, we sort of allow you to do. Um, when you should go back to your training, you know, what is the performance schedule and all that. Um, that's what we want to tailor make. Um, from, our, um, from our department, we have a lot of experience with Hong Kong athletes. And, and to be honest, um, the treatment of our athletes is completely different to, um, to the uh, layman or the recreational, um, you know, football player. So if that guy is telling me, you know, in two months time, you have to prepare for the Olympics or prepare for the Asian games, you know, the treatment is gonna be um, a lot different. And I think that requires a multidisciplinary approach. And that's what we're trying to do. And um, we're happy that Miss Anna, Anna Chen is, um, is on board because, you know, she uh, definitely can help make this happen. All right, all right, that's great. Um, for those who have questions or um, it's time for you to see a doctor and get your um, little tricky ankle problem solved. And um, remember you can make an appointment through the CUHK Dance Medicine website and you get all your answer, answer in your appointment time. Um, I'm afraid that we can't uh, answer every question in this webinar, but it has been so super interesting. And thank you very much for uh, Jojo and Samuel for offering your um, valuable information and also your time, the doctor's time. <laughs> so uh, I really hope that we can have more collaborations with you and also with the local com community in the future. Thank you very much. Now, before, um, before I finish off, I would like to make a few announcements for some events that's coming up in the next few months. So as you may know, this year, um, APA are committed to promote to promoting mental health in dancers. So we are very excited to announce that for the upcoming webinars, we have also invited prominent international guests to speak about the importance of mental health in dance, so the physical side and also the men mental side. So uh, such as we have Dr. Liliana Arrojo is the program leader for the dance science um, postgraduate program at Trinity Lab and Conservatoire of Music and Dance in the UK. Another speaker will be Dr. Lucy Clements, Senior Lecturer in Psychology from Chichester University. And also Erin Sanchez, she's the manager of the Health Year Program at 1K. So we have three um, UK speakers listed up already. And for the public, I would like you to remind you that uh, the application period for admission to our MFA, our Master of Fine Art in Dance program is now also open. If you're interested and you would like to know more, please send us an email, contact the school or browse our APA website. And lastly, for our current students, remember after the Chinese New Year holiday, another chance for you to know a bit more about dance science is up. We have the dance science optimizing performance course that will be offered as elective course. So please sign up. So uh, anything else from Jojo and Samuel you would like to share on the last note? Yeah, thank you for having us and we look forward to, you know, um, uh, advancing, um, I think, dance science and medicine.
right. So once again, thank you, Samuel. Thank you, Jojo, for joining us tonight. And thank you all for attending the webinar. And we hope to have you two back soon. This was really, really helpful for us. Good night and take care. We'll see you next time. Stay tuned to our next webinar. Bye. Mm -hmm.